I just put stuff on the stairs. Remind me to bring them up. This is my upstairs where I rarely go. We locked the dog here for a day while we went away. It's 3,000 square feet. She pees here or poops on the floor. Not a big deal. And I got back in the shop. I'm like, wow, she did zero damage. And then I got up here and she ripped the carpet up. And she ripped a whole bunch of stuff up in that corner and some paperwork. And got into the couch and spread a bunch of the couch stuff around. But all in all, not bad. Got lucky because she did not rip into the nice King Ranch interior there. So we'll move that downstairs, we'll dust that off. We bought that last summer because it was a stellar deal. There's the truck, shop's looking pretty good. Got it nice and clean. Here we go. The intercoolers, the radiators, and cooling all figured out. So we're gonna keep stripping this 2010 F550. We're cutting the firewall out, moving all of the HVAC stuff over. Pulled everything back out again. We'll put some Be Quiet sound deadening in this one. Clean it all up. Oh, yes. After putting it in the Mustang and the Bronco, we're going with a Holly 12 inch dash that communicates with our cat. Okay, so Fords not cooperating with me here. The F-150 is a really nice steering column because it's got tilt and telescoping, which is important because there's a lot of different size drivers driving this truck. It does not have the key. The, key, the entire key solenoid was missing, so that was fine. We got a stellar deal on that one when we bought it. The um, Super Duty is not telescoping or tilt, and the steering wheel is already coming apart with that gross where it was sticky. So I thought, worst comes to worst, we can move the steering wheel over. But the steering wheel on the 150 has splines, the one on the 550 is hex, so that is not an option. So then I thought, um, what about mounts? Mounts are different, so these are mounts nice and close together. These are far apart, as you can tell. Uh, we do want the column shift, but just looking at it, there's no possible way that we can take what we want from the 150 and incorporate it to the 550. Keeping in mind that we want to keep all the wiring and all the communication stuff off of the 550 because that's the complete wiring harness that we have. Even though we have the dash off the 150, we're missing all the body control modules, all the computers that talk to each other. Um, we're just missing stuff. So we need the rest of that truck. That guy bought it off of some other guy exactly the way we bought it. So it's impossible to get that. So for now, um, while we're sourcing other parts, I'm gonna put this column back in again, just so we can situate the seats. I'm gonna make all the mounts for the seats. We can still move it and drive it, use the key, start figuring out our wiring. If we're able to source a super duty steering column with column shift and this brown, nice brown um, leather wrap steering wheel, we'll buy that. Otherwise, uh, we're just gonna carry on with the project as is, and at least this question is answered. So here we go. Okay, so for the seats, passenger seat is no problem. Driver's seat is a little bit more complicated because it's got the memories. So it's got a couple controllers and stuff that you might uh, think are important, but they're not. Just cut all of it. You don't need that. What you need is the main plug that comes out of the switch. You give the black wire and the black and the red wire power. It doesn't even matter which way. Um, little 12 volt um, Milwaukee battery works great. And then you just flick buttons. You just flick these things until um, uh, you figure out with a test light which wire, when you flick something, lights up coming out of that switch. And then you connect that to the corresponding motor and you have working power seats. Now it doesn't, that doesn't do the, the heat. You gotta get a separate controller from that. When we get into that, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make a video on that. For now, we're just gonna hook up the wires, trim the harness and put this in the trucks. Here we go. So once I figured out 
which wires they were, I labeled them all backwards, forwards, front up, front down. And remember that all the switch does is move 12 volts around and flip it and reverse it. So if power is the red wire once and the ground is to make it go back, then um, if you give power to the white and ground to the red, it goes forward, if that makes sense to you at all. Super simple. I thought it'd be neat if, since this is the plug, if I could unpin it from here and unpin it from here and just pin it directly into the plug corresponding, but of course the pins are completely different, so I'm stuck by connecting because I, I do not have those pins. Oh well. Would you just look at that? Nice and neat. Everything works just like it should. The only thing is you gotta replace the battery like every two, three months or so, depending on how often you switch seats, but not a big deal. You just unbolt the seats and charge the battery and put a new one in. All right, throw this in and uh, we can start making our brackets to bolt her down. Here we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is perfect. Literally, throttle pedal right there. Man, that is sick. Head touching the ceiling. Oh no, wait, wait, hold on. Let me just, let me just lower that down a little bit. Oh, now, perfectly fine. Tilt would be nice. I think we need a tilt steering wheel. Just to see the gauges, the top of the steering wheel just covers up, but I can shim that underneath the bolts too. Console's about the right height. Oh man, this is perfect. People are gonna say that this was too cramped, but uh, I wonder if they knew that I could bolt the seats wherever I wanted. Let me just, let me just get a little closer to that steering wheel there. Or just shimmy it back. It's perfect. <laughs> no regrets on the interior at all so far. So far, a lot of work, but uh, yeah. I think we can um, start by bolting down the console, get the misses in the seats, make sure she's comfortable. And then uh, she's like the smallest and I'm like the tallest and everybody else driving it is in between somewhere. So if we're both happy, then uh, everybody else should be happy too. Here we go. That's the second Milwaukee tool that hit me in the face. Oh, right in the nose. This one just got me right square in the nose. The other one got me in the tooth and I, I got a chipped tooth. Let's call it quits there before I really get hurt. Uh, the wiring's done and now we can just bolt it down. And once that's in place, we can still tilt the dash one way or another or move it over. But I'm actually really happy with that. Um, the door, the door, because this part of the dash comes out a little bit, just hits the door switch, whereas that door we can close without manipulating anything. So that's awesome. This one I gotta move the, uh, I just gotta do something with that door switch. Nice, man, am I happy. A lot of planning to get to this point, but now I, I can see the finish line, boys. Here we go. Okay, so originally we were gonna use this dash, uh, maybe get Classic Industries or somebody to put different gauges in the back that communicates with our cat. But uh, after putting it in the Mustang and the Bronco, we're going with a Holly 12 inch dash, just because it's so much easier. We can cram more gauges into a single setup and um, have it a little less complicated. So match the, uh, the stereo nicely with backup camera, all that fun stuff. 
So she'll be top notch. Plus uh, Aaron can incorporate some Caterpillar stuff into the dash. So excited to show you guys that. Here we go. I gotta pull this cover off too, because obviously we wanna be able to touch it. Okay, so I very crudely cut the, basically all the gauges out with my little die grinder. And now I'm going to just as crudely sand all those so they're perfectly smooth. I could have been a doctor. Even the dog agrees. Right, puppy? Okay, so. It'll look good, I promise. I had to cut a hole in there for our plug. That plug will allow us to do a bunch of whole bunch of inputs and outputs, and then that's our GPS. So I'm gonna drop that in. I had to I had to take a little bit more off of this piece than I'd like, but it'll probably still work, I think. I hope. We got one clip left that we can pop in here. And we'll run it over to the Sure. Once we have a final set with we'll silicone and everything kind of in place, there's still screws that hold it up in there. But um, it'll just rough test fit. We're gonna shim that up a hair. <laughs> That's like perfect in my view <laughs> with the steering wheel right here. Man, that's sick. Let me just adjust the seat a little bit. Hold on. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> Console, the bracket's in the way. I'm hitting my chair here. But this will be right up to the front there. We've got our auxiliary buttons, uh, brake controller. I think was supposed to go here. It didn't come with it, so we'll figure that out. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, I'm going to take some stuff apart again. We'll make the brackets properly for the console, bolt that down, then bolt the seats down, and then uh, we'll power up the dash. While I'm doing this, Aaron's uh, making a new dash that matches the King Ranch and the Caterpillar, and the interior is well on its way. Here we go.
All right, it's so pulled everything back out again and just uh, chiseled off all of that rubber matting. We'll put some Be Quiet sound deadening in this one, clean it all up, but uh, mainly it's so that I can get a good weld. If I want to weld, nothing catches fire, so we'll vacuum that up. And then, uh, yeah, it's funny. I had some uh, comments saying grinder and paint make me the welder. I'm not, I ain't, whatever. It's like, these are all butt welded. <laughs> New firewall to old floor. And I have a couple small pinholes that I still have to close up. But imagine insulting someone when they're butt welding two firewalls that were never meant to be together, together. Anyway, we'll grind those off. We'll paint everything afterwards yet, but I'll vacuum this out and keep assembling. Here we go. Quick little weld and a little bit of Rust-Oleum paint, which looks brand new. Throw that back on there, and bolt her in place. Here we go. So once we have this mounted properly, then uh, even though I'm not gonna drill the holes, I'm going to place it, and um, I'm gonna put the, be quiet, be quiet underneath this, and then drill, drill through the carpet and everything so I don't have to line up holes and then bolt it down from the underneath after. There we go. Okay, so that's where the seat's gonna sit. That's with, I could go farther back, but um, I, I'm already comfortable where it is now. I still have like an inch and a half, two inches to go back, and I can base, like there's a lot of travel on the slide. Ford really thought that through. So, um, this one is basically right where it's supposed to be. I'm going to weld a little plate that comes down and that it can sit on, but it'll still get bolted to the bottom there. Um, now to shim it up, uh, they sell these little discs and you just pile them on top of each other until uh, you get the height that you want. And then you can pull that out and measure it, make sure that it's not leaning at all. So we'll do that. And then the back is basically these brackets are exactly an inch and a half too low. So I'm just gonna make those brackets go right down. I'm gonna basically build something on the seat itself and um, do a bolt right straight through to the floor. So I'll put a dowel in the uh, center there where the hole goes, I'll weld that to the bottom of it so that it, I can sandwich it down, but that's basically where I want it. So here we go. Because these are the brackets that go underneath the seat, a little taper on the floor, and then a dowel in the middle so that I can push it down as hard as I can and uh, it'll stay in place. We'll tack this in place and then weld it solid when the seat's out, paint it, Bam, done, here we go. Okay, all the brackets are made for the console, the seats, and the front. Dash is mounted, now we're getting to the, the back. I forget, I think I had to lower this, or raise it, or something. And I'll start with pulling that back thing off, make some uh, mounts for car seats. Uh, pretty straightforward, I gotta drop everything down, and it's right on that edge. So if I just bash that down, <laughs> if, I, if I just put a fold in here, um, I can basically curl it down to the height I want. And same with that, I'll just nick it right. Same with this one, I'll just cut it here and here, fold that up and then bolt it down and then same with that other one. I think it's just basically a direct bolt in. I can pull this off yet and then make make the clips for the backrest um, wherever they need to be. But pretty, pretty simple really. Here we go. Okay, so there's a nice shot of kind of the interior in there, the way that she is. And now I'm gonna pull it all back out again and paint the floor and finish up the seam sealer and uh, put the sound deadening in and then the carpet. 
Then we'll put everything back and then we'll drill straight through the carpet, um, through the sound deadening, through the floor, and then go from there. Oh, here we go. We're just gonna put some nice trim clad white over everything and then uh, we'll seam seal it in the morning. The, uh, the point is to get the paint kind of in the pores and then the seam sealer to go over top and uh, keep all the water from ever coming back. There we go. <laughs> We'll get out the crayons and color me tickled pink. Doesn't that look sweet? Now I like using the brush because I can get it on nice and thick, shove her down into the corners and uh, make sure that she's never gonna rest. So we'll let that dry and uh, get on with the sound deadening in the morning. Here we go. So this is Be Quiet's ultimate sound deadening. Great stuff, really, really sticky on one side, so it's really easy to work with. Aluminum on the other side, so you can use it under the floor mat, you can use it in the ceiling, you can use it in the doors. Uh, it really helps with the speaker sound, and also, even if you wanted to, you could use it underneath the hood. Uh, we got other stuff for under the hood, and on the firewall and in the transmission tunnel. But this stuff is great, nice and easy to work with. Contour is really nice. Um, sticks to just about anything and you but you you can still kind of pull it up if you kind of mess up and and stick it back down again you guys seen me use the the stuff from amazon before in the gto and that that comes with little little sections and that's that works okay but it's byproducts of something else like uh um ductwork insulation or whatever this stuff is meant for sound and heat it's supposed to take the vibrations and kind of turn it into like a low density heat um, not that you're gonna cook your feet or anything like that, but this is meant for it. And because it's super thin, it can go behind the actual insulation that's meant for the, the truck itself. So that's really nice. My only mistake was I should have started in the middle and worked my way out. Um, now, I, because it's really high contours on this floor, um, it's hard to get a straight line and then keep it straight, whereas the middle is very simple to do. So. That's why we do these videos, so you don't make those mistakes. Here we go. Should I go all the way up and over, or go the other way? I don't know. I don't know. I'm 50 foot roll, so might as well. I got plenty. Okay, so that looks really good, but this is where I messed up because we ordered carpet, but because our business address is different than my address, I canceled the order because we, we were suspicious. That was a while ago and the carpet's back ordered. I kind of stuck putting this thing back in just, just for now. More than likely I got to pull some stuff out and pull the carpet out again anyway and add wires and whatnot. Not a bad thing either because I probably would have ordered the wrong color. Um, we'll see what matches with the seats and the dash and the door panels the nicest and then go from there. So I'll throw this back in again, just throw the dash in just for the purposes of this video. Um, but know that uh, more than likely we'll be taking it apart again, adding some wires, doing some small stuff here and there. And in the meantime, um, I don't know if we'll film all that, 
but you get the idea of what's involved in a project. Put it together, take it apart at least 10 times, and then final fitment is a very, very good day. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so again, for all those people who said that we uh, the original dash looked better, I have to humbly disagree with you. I'm very excited for this. Uh, I gotta use a little bit of your imagination. Now, the gauges obviously are, hook are hooked up because we don't have an engine in front of us, but Aaron set up the dash. It's got Kat's name on it, it's got our name on it, Allison, King Ranch, nice in the wood trim. And then we've got boost, RPM, two fuel tank levels, engine temperature, transmission temperature, engine oil, fuel pressure, air pressure for the compressed air and the tank that we've got, battery, speedometer, odometer, trip meter, and that's it. <laughs> if we wanna add more, we can, and Holly gives you that, that uh, option. Uh, a couple other things, nothing's bolted down yet um, because it's mo really easy to move stuff in and out. And for the last final assembly, once all the wiring is done, all the lights are working, all the, like, the dome and everything's working, then I'll bolt everything down through the Be Quiet, through the carpet, and then put the plates on the bottom. So uh, check out Be Quiet as well. If you go to our website, DeVosGarage.com, and you become a builder tier member, you can get 20% off. Um, they've got a lot more to offer, including firewall protection and transmission and also under hood stuff. We're going to be using all of that, but those will be in different videos once we uh, put the cab back on it again and make sure we have all the proper clearances. There are a couple pieces still missing, like the, the piece to connect the console to the dash, uh, a couple other small little pieces here and there. So you got to use a, your imagination a little bit, but that's it for this video. We'll finish all those other things in the, in the background and keep carrying on. Next video will be the cab back on the frame and um, everything pretty well bolted together engine wise. So brake booster, steering, all of that, it's gotta be figured out next. So uh, lots of other good stuff go going on. Also a couple videos up on uh, the Boss Garage Heavy Duty on the transport truck and tank, so check that out. And uh, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich because you're not working on your stuff. You're, you can watch YouTube in the background, but but work on it, uh, work on your projects as well. Uh, and to help you guys out with that, we've got a lot more discounts on a pile of different companies on our website. So check that out because we want to see you guys finish your projects as well. It takes time, but it is well, well worth it. We have a one of one that you cannot buy and I'm super proud of everything that we've done. So it just takes time. Here we go, guys. Okay.